This is white flour, and this is wheat flour. But wait, isn't white flour also made from wheat? So what's the difference? And which one is a boy supposed to use to be healthy? Well, we're gonna get into all that, so hang on to your horses, let's get to it. Hey everybody, my name is Dennis, and over the past 10 years, I've spent thousands of hours researching nutrition and applying it to my from scratch cooking. Today, we're gonna go over two questions. First, what's the difference between white flour and wheat flour? And once we know that, uh, which one is better for you? Which one is healthy? Okay, so what's the difference between white flour and wheat flour? Well, the names are kind of confusing because technically they can both be called wheat flour because the difference between white flour and wheat flour is in how they're made, not in what they're made from. They're both made from wheat berries, whether that's red wheat berries, white wheat berries, or durum wheat berries, you get the picture. It doesn't matter the type of wheat, any of those wheats can be used to make either white flour or wheat flour. So I just wanted to get that out of the way so that you're not super confused when you go to the store and you see a bag of white wheat flour or red whole wheat flour and you're like, I don't know what's going on here. It's just the type of plant. But the type of wheat plant has no bearing on the discussion of today, so we're gonna move on now that I've completely muddied the water by bringing it up. I'm sorry. Hopefully you're not super confused already. Let's get back to the regular discussion and talk about what wheat flour is. A better name for it is actually unrefined wheat flour or whole wheat flour. And that's because wheat flour or whole wheat flour as we'll refer to it from now on is made from the entire wheat berry. So you take the wheat, you harvest it, you take out the little wheat berries off of the stalk, you throw away the stalk, and then those wheat berries contain three parts, the hull, the endoplasm, and the germ. And all three parts are just smashed up together as a wheat berry, right? Imagine like a little grain of rice, it looks pretty similar. They're smashed up and made into whole wheat flour. And there you go, that's all it is. You just take wheat, throw away the stalks, and grind it up and you got whole wheat flour. The three parts of the wheat berry that I mentioned are actually very similar to if you imagine like a hard boiled egg, you've got the shell on the outside, that's the hull. You've got the white on the inside, that's the endoplasm or the starch. And then on the very inside of the egg, you got the yolk, that's the germ in a wheat berry. Same concept. Whole wheat flour is what has been used throughout history for thousands of years in like all the cultures that have flour. And if you hear a historical reference to bread or something like that, it's referring to whole wheat flour bread. White flour gets its name because it's white, but it's more technically referred to as refined wheat flour. It's refined because it only contains one part of the wheat berry, just the starchy interior, also known as the endoplasm. Here, I've got the whole wheat flour and I've got the white flour, and you can just see the color difference. This one's got a lot of brown and dark, and this one's almost pure white, hence the name white flour. For the most part, white flour is actually a modern food just due to the complex mechanics needed to separate the different parts of the wheat berry. It has been consumed occasionally in the past, but only very rarely, considering just the enormous amount of manual labor needed to sift out the hull and the germ from the starch. Basically, if you weren't a pharaoh in ancient Egypt with a slave army, <laughs> you didn't have the means to make white flour. So before the Industrial Revolution, 99.999% of people throughout history have been eating unrefined whole wheat flour, not white flour. Now we know what they are, so which one is better for you? Well, it depends. White flour contains very low levels of micronutrients because those micronutrients, the vitamins and minerals, are stored in the hull and the germ of the wheat berry, which is the part that's removed during the refining process. So it would only be natural to assume that whole wheat flour, which still contains the hull and the germ, would be more nutritious because that's where the nutrients are stored. Yes, except that the same part of the wheat berry that contains the nutrients also contain the anti-nutrients that are intended to prevent the grain from sprouting before it's been planted in the ground. Because we have to remember that wheat berries are grains, which are also seeds for wheat. So with the anti-nutrients there, the nutrients can't be accessed by our body and therefore don't do any good for us. Imagine someone gives you a million dollars, but it's locked away in a safe. If you don't have a way to open that safe, the million dollars is useless to you. So we need a key in order to open that safe. Same thing with wheat berries. We need a key in order to remove the anti-nutrients so that the nutrients can be used by us. The traditional solution to unlocking the grain was to use a slow preparation method that would take at a minimum 12 hours, but could span all the way up to several days. These methods include sprouting the grains, 
soaking the flour, or fermenting the dough, as in the case with sourdough bread. Using these traditional methods, the anti-nutrients are neutralized, making the nutrients accessible, and actually some of the anti-nutrients are also converted into usable nutrients by our body. So if you're willing to put in the work, it's kind of a win-win. But if you're not willing to put in the work, that brings us to the modern solution, which is basically just stripping out the hull and the germ and that leaves us with a flour that is mostly just empty calories. Granted, it no longer contains the anti-nutrients, but we've also lost all the good stuff too. A little bit of white flour here and there isn't gonna kill you, and it's not even really bad for you, but too much white flour over a period of time will cause nutritional deficiencies, which could present as tooth decay, susceptibility to disease, chronic problems, and just general poor health. And no, in case you're wondering, enriched white flour makes barely any difference and in some cases can actually make the nutritional deficiencies worse. Because the vitamins and minerals that they're using to enrich white flour are really low quality versions of those vitamins and minerals and can't really be utilized by our bodies for anything other than staving off death, basically. But like I said, in moderation, white flour is not necessarily all bad because it actually, I mean, it's really tasty. There's almost no comparison between white flour and wheat flour when you're making a pie crust or cookies or something like that. Again, if you're gonna eat white flour every once in a while in moderation, it's not gonna kill you. Just make sure that you're also getting nutrient dense food alongside it. So in summary, Whole wheat flour contains all three parts of the wheat berry and is best used for making traditional style, slow prepared breads. And refined white flour only contains one part of the wheat berry, meaning that it has a lower nutritional level, but it also doesn't contain the anti-nutrients. So it makes it perfect for quick things like thickening sauces and gravies, and for making sweet treats like pie crusts and cookies. Now, I recognize that there's a ton more that could be said about wheat flour, like what type of wheat you should be buying and whether or not you need to buy organic. And should you even be buying wheat flour at all or going for a gluten-free flour? And so I'm gonna make another video going over everything you need to know in order to choose healthy flour. But in the meantime, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on that video I was just talking about or any of my other videos on kitchen tools, nutritious cooking, and healthy living. That's about it.